everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I've got an awesome video for you today because we are finally able to reveal the performance numbers of the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, that is the CPU that we are going to be reviewing today and we are going to be comparing it against a whole lot of interesting competition as well including the Ryzen 9 7950 x 3 d which is the 16 core uh, 16 core 32 thread CPU with 3D V cache. This is the cheapest 3D V cache model, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Cheapest one you're going to find. There's obviously the 7900X3D, which I have yet to look at, but we will be comparing it against the very stiff competition from Intel in the form of the Core i7 13700K, 13900K as well, two very interesting CPUs there. The 13700K costing about the same as this CPU, so that's gonna be a very interesting mashup. Also interesting is how the 7800X3D compares to the 7700X, which doesn't have 3D vCache, but has the same number of cores and threads, but also has higher boost frequencies. So some very, very interesting numbers that we need to look at today, especially if you're a gamer because that is kind of what this CPU is aimed at. It's not so much a multi-threaded monster, it is the successor really to the 5800X3D and all focus will be on games. But if you wanna know about content creation, are you gonna get hammered if you switch out to Premiere Pro or uh, image editing or those kind of things? We have some content creation benchmarks for you as well. So whether you're gaming or content creation focused or a bit of both, you will wanna check out the benchmarks later on. First though, a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com where right now you can get great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11 and Microsoft Office. And even better is I've got a 25% discount code to share with you guys. Windows 10 Professional for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, click apply, and the US price will drop from $22.09 down to just $16.57, and in the UK, you'll see the price fall to just £12.79. Once you've paid, head over to your order page, click the get key button, and copy your Windows key code. When you're in Windows, you wanna move your mouse over to the start button, right click, go to settings, then update and security, and then move up to activation and finally click on change your product key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click next, then click activate and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. You can do the exact same thing with Office 2021 Professional, CRT 25, click apply and you will see a hefty discount. Thanks again to SCD Key for sponsoring today's video. So in terms of specifications, what we are looking at with the 7800X3D is a CPU with a whole lot of cache bolted on. And we have 104 megabytes in total compared to just 40 megabytes for the 7700X, which has the same number of cores and threads. Now the benefit of 3D vCache, the extra vCache means that you're having to cache out to system memory far less frequency and that reduces latency which benefits some but not all applications now a lot of games are going to benefit quite significantly from this uh, from this advantage but as we saw with the 7950x3d and the 5800x3d before it there are some significant benefits to be gained so where it doesn't help you so much is in content creation because we do have lower frequencies lower boost frequencies that is, for the 7800X3D compared to the 7700X. So there will be situations where the 7700X and even the 7700, the lowest end socket AM5 processor, are actually faster even though they are cheaper as well. So in terms of pricing, we have the 13700K sitting about the same, a little bit more, uh, at around $432. The 70 800X3D retailing for around the same, depending on where you're going, where you're looking. The 13900K retailing for $577, so it's around uh, about $130 more than the 13700K and the 7800X3D. Finally, we've got the 7700X, which retails for $400, so it's about a $50 saving, and also the Ryzen 9 7900X, which will retail for about $432. So content creation, guys, you'll be specifically interested in the 7900X and how it performs. 
And uh, further down the chart, you'll be looking at the Ryzen 7 7700X and, and its gaming performance compared to the CPU that we're looking at today and whether or not this 3D vCache is going to be of benefit to gamers out there. So in terms of our test system, we have the beautiful Wanda here and uh, freshly spruced up with a uh, spring clean to, to blow out all the cobwebs and that kind of stuff. We have a palette Game Rock RTX 4090. So we're not uh, pulling any punches here. We are going right the way up to the high end to see how this CPU performs with the fastest graphics card out there right now. We have an Asus ROG Strix uh, X670E motherboard, and uh, we obviously have a full water cooling system here as well. So there are no thermal limits in terms of cooling the CPU. You're basically getting maximum performance. And we also have a 6400 megahertz uh, kit of DDR5 memory from Kingston there as well. So thanks to ASUS, Kingston, Palette, and uh, also Corsair for the water cooling components, and of course to AMD for sending over the processor. So without further ado, the last thing I've got to do is ask you to subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications. It means a lot to have your support, and I've got a whole bunch more stuff coming up over the next few weeks, including new graphics cards that are hitting the shelves and loads more content and reviews besides. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so you're notified when I upload a new video. Also, don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. It just helps punch me up the algorithm. So liking the video really, really helps, as do your comments. Are you thinking of getting the 7800X3D? Is this the CPU that you've been waiting for uh, before jumping ship and investing in DDR5 memory? Is this the CPU that you've really been holding off even through the first generation of Socket AM5 CPUs uh, in order to jump ship onto this platform, whether you're moving from Intel or Socket AM4, of course. So always love hearing about your stories in the comments below. And just let me know what you think of this video as well. So that's it for the first part of this video. Let's crack on with the benchmarks. Starting with some 1080p testing then, and in Forza Horizon 5, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D was way out in front with a massive average frame rate of 204 frames per second. But the minimum 99th percentile, on the other hand, was actually noticeably ahead of the other 3D VCash CPU here, the Ryzen 9 7950X3D. So that's likely due to the, how the CPU is configured with uh, lower latency due to the internal configuration and the limitation of all those eight cores uh, having direct access to that cache, whereas there's a little of, bit of added latency with the Ryzen 9 7950X3D due to the fact it has 16 cores spread across two dies. So moving on down the graph, we've got the Ryzen 7 7700X, which we know performs really well in a lot of games. Again, due to that latency issue, it's faster noticeably than the Ryzen 9 7950X. We've uh, seen that before in benchmarks. So again, this Ryzen 9 7950X and most likely the 7900X as well, not performing anywhere near as good as the Ryzen 7 7800X3D here. Finally then, the Intel CPUs, the 13700K and 13900K, just not able to match the Ryzen 7 7800X3D here. So it's a big win for the 7800X3D at 1080p. Moving on to Watch Dogs at 1080p, and again, it's a win for the 7800X3D, this time outstripping the Ryzen 9 7950X3D, both on the average and minimum 99th percentile. And again, similar amounts over the Core i9-13900K and the Core i7-13700K. And there's quite a stark difference between the X3D chip here and the 7950X and 7700X. So very, very good performance for the uh, X3D chips here, specifically the 7800X3D, by far and away the best CPU out of the bunch. Finally, in Far Cry 6 at 1080p, we've got a minimum 99th percentile of 160 frames per second and an average of 207. The only CPU that's able to get close to matching any of those numbers is the Ryzen 9 7950X3D, which is unsurprising, which bettered it slightly on the average frame rate, but again, we're seeing a slower minimum 99th percentile from that CPU. So generally here, higher frequencies and uh, core counts 
uh, are generally favoured in Far Cry 5. That's generally what we see, so it's no surprising to see the 13900K and 13700K doing pretty well in this test. But again, the low latency of the 7800X3D and its extra cache wins out. So again, overall, it's a, the fastest CPU in Far Cry 6 at 1080p. Now stepping up to 1440p, and again, this is uh, not going to be that much of a stretch for the RTX 4090. We're still dealing with a monstrously powerful graphics card here, but what we're seeing again is the 7950X3D pretty much matching the average frame rate of the 7800X3D. But the uh, next CPU down, really, in terms of the minimum 99 percentile, is the Ryzen 7 7700X. Now, that CPU was 135 and 181 versus 143 and 193. So it is significantly slower and I'd argue that that $50 that you'll be spending extra on the 7800X3D is going to be worth it. Now again going further down the stack, Intel not doing particularly well here. Uh, Forza Horizon 5 just seems to favour AMD CPUs, we've seen that uh, from the start pretty much so no surprising to see the uh, 7800X3D um, outstripping both Intel CPUs that we've got. Moving on to Watch Dogs New Legion and uh, 1440p, we have again a win for the 7800X3D. Here though, uh, the CPU results um, fairly, a bit, well, a little bit more compressed, I guess, but the 7950X3D just behind uh, in terms of minimum 99 percentile and average frame rate. And also here, the Core i9-13900K doing a, uh, a pretty good job of, of keeping up. And uh, the 13700K, though, noticeably behind 10 frames per second adrift on the minimum 99th percentile and 159 frames per second versus 164. So, again, if you're going to be using a less powerful graphics card, something like a, uh, a 3070, 3080, um, then these results would be compressed and there probably won't be as much of a difference. But if you're looking to get the very best performance out of your Ryzen 7 7800X3D, it's pretty clear that it is the best CPU for the job, at least in Watch Dogs at 1440p. Our final game test then, and it's Far Cry 6 at 1440p, and again, no surprises, we have the 7800X3D at the top of the chart. Now, the next CPU down is the 13900K, which was 8 frames per second adrift, on the uh, minimum 99th percentile, so that's well short of 10% uh, difference there. Uh, the average frame rate, again, around 15 frames per second there, so again, short of 10% difference. So overall, there are some benchmarks here where the 7800X3D in games is a lot faster, and in some uh, other benchmarks, it's less than 10%. So it really does vary as to where you are, uh, where your best uh, placing your money, but overall the 7800X3D is the fastest X3D chip I've tested so far. It's much faster than the 7950X3D due to that slightly lower latency, just everything being crammed into um, into that 8-core uh, layout, and we have a much better value proposition here as well compared to the Core i9-13900K and also the i7-13700K which has been slower in pretty much every test. So gaming performance is pretty unequivocal. Unequivocal. The Ryzen 7 7800X3D is an absolute monster at least in the tests uh, that I have in these games uh, in the graphs but that goes for both 1080p and 1440p. Now, moving on to content creation, and this is maybe uh, some benchmarks that you're probably not that interested in with this with this CPU, but we are looking to have a, a reasonable amount of content creation performance that's hopefully not too far away from the Ryzen 7 7700X. So with a score of 10,800, uh, that compares to 12,200 with the 7700X, so that's, what, about 1,400 points or so. Not that much of a difference. Um, again, that 3D V-Cache seeming to benefit photo editing because it did actually manage to beat the Core i7-13700K and was only 1,000 points adrift of the Ryzen 9 7950X. And uh, interestingly here, that point is kind of proven by the fact that the 7950X3D was faster than the non-X3D uh, version of that 16-core CPU. Uh, not by much, but it was faster despite lower frequencies. So it's clear that the 3D vCache does help in some situations in content creation, namely in video editing software. 
moving on to Cinebench and again it's pretty clear that we have a not particularly great CPU for rendering here in the 7800X3D. Just that lack of, uh, of frequency and cores kind of hurting it against a lot of the other CPUs on test but really if you look at the comparison between it and the Ryzen 7 7800X it's not a vast difference given the uh, the huge performance benefits you get in games. So multi-threaded stuff so far seems to be you kind of lose a bit of performance um, in some situations but it's not usually catastrophic. However you obviously want to pay attention to similarly priced CPUs such as the Ryzen 9 7900X and the Core i7-13700K, which were significantly faster here. So the 13700K, for example, a score of 30,000 points is near, getting on for nearly double what the Ryzen 7 7800X3D managed. So uh, not really the kind of all-round uh, champion that the Ryzen 9 7950X3D was, because that managed 35,000, so it's uh, yet again another massive leap up there, as well as stunning gaming performance. The Ryzen 7 7800X3D very much um, at home in games rather than content creation. Adobe Premiere Pro, again, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D sitting at the bottom of the graph, but not that far behind the Ryzen 7 7700X and 7900X. 7900X, obviously, the other CPU you might be considering for around this price, and you're not really getting any more performance at all. In fact, you have to kind of step up to the Ryzen 9 7950X3D to get more than a couple of hundred points, and all the way up to the Core i9-13900K, which is a lot more expensive uh, to get any uh, a, a kind of sub significant benefit uh, for that money but the i9 generally justifying the extra outlay here and obviously being Intel's fastest CPU in a lot of games as well. Moving on to Handbrake and here we again have the lowest result on test with the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Uh, again though it's not that much further behind the Ryzen 7 7700X so if you're weighing up the difference between the two um, you are definitely going to be better off getting the 7800X3D here assuming that you are going to be gaming which is kind of why you'd want to opt for that CPU anyway. Now if you do move up the graph the similar CPUs in terms of price, the Core i7-13700K and the Ryzen 9 7900X significantly faster at handbrake. So again, the uh, increased core counts and frequencies on offer just offering much, much better performance in um, multi-threaded workloads such as this one. So the Ryzen 7 7800X3D is not terrible, uh, but it's not great either. So it's not losing out uh, really that much to the Ryzen 7 7700X, despite that CPU being cheaper, you are getting the benefits of 3D vCache in games. So you certainly wouldn't want to pick this CPU as uh, a handbrake demon, but as uh, a casual you know, video encoding CPU, gaming CPU first, then uh, it's, it's not a terrible proposition. Our final test then is power consumption and with the lower frequencies and AMD reigning in uh, the TDP as well, we are looking at a system draw of a 193 watts. So again, the 7950X3D drew 255 watts, which is now the second lowest power draw. Uh, but obviously, in terms of gaming performance per watt, this CPU is an absolute monster. So all of that power pretty much going into the, uh, the huge amount of cache. But considering it's using 80 watts less than the Ryzen 7 7700X, but absolutely annihilating it in games, as it does most other CPUs in the graph, um, it's, it's just kind of that, that kind of gaming performance per watt is absolutely staggering here. So the Core i9-13900K drawing, well, nearly three times as much, which is absolutely crazy for the uh, the system. Uh, this is obviously using uh, Cinebench, so it's kind of a um, uh, content creation uh, CPU stress workload rather than adding the graphics card on as well. But obviously, if you're stressing the CPU with a high-end graphics card in games and putting plenty of load onto your CPU as well, these power savings will come into play. And you could see a uh, couple of hundred watts maybe difference um, thanks to the efficiency of the 7800 
X3D and uh, just seeing the benefit of using the cache versus cores and frequency and high voltages. So again, it's a pretty good result for AMD here. Now in terms of frequencies then, as we can see here in Cinebench with all cores boosting, we saw a frequency of about 4.8 GHz, which compares to about 5.2 GHz all core boost with the 7700X, so that would explain the lower performance in a lot of multi-threaded workloads. Temperatures sat around 80 degrees under full load, but this was with custom liquid cooling. So what do we make of the Ryzen 7 7800X3D then? Well, starting with the uh, performance outside of games to start with, because I think that's kind of important to talk about, you are seeing a fair amount less performance than the 7700X. Now, it's not devastatingly slower. You're still faster than a lot of the, uh, the cheaper CPUs out there. So the 7700, uh, 7700, for example, is uh, generally slower in a couple of tests, but it is also faster in a couple of them as well. So... What this CPU isn't is something that's kind of great at everything. You will see a drop back in performance in content creation. Now, that wasn't necessarily the case in photo editing, and I've seen this before, 3 dv cache aiding the likes of Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, the extra cache just seems to benefit there, but you, on the flip side, Premiere Pro and Handbrake, they all suffer because they don't benefit that much from the cache and you have lower frequencies, which means less performance. So if you're a casual content creator, this CPU is absolutely fine. You will see better performance from the 7700 and the 7700X, which are also a lot cheaper, but that's not why you're buying this CPU. You're buying it primarily for gaming performance. Moving on to gaming performance and just, wow, this thing is so fast, it is ridiculous even faster in a lot of things than the 17950X 3D, but we did kind of expect that due to the way that the cache is split between uh, dies and those kind of things. There's just a bit more latency in there than the CPU that we've got here, which just has a single die and a whole lot of cache to go with it. So we are seeing more of a benefit there uh, in terms of reducing latency, reducing that time caching out to system memory and this is why this CPU is absolutely the one to go for. If, you're, if you've been holding out for Socket AM5 and you knew these 3D Vcache models were coming along, this is the CPU for you. In fact, I would almost argue that AMD should have released these ones at the same time as all the other ones, or maybe just ignored the other ones completely, because this is where uh, all the performances in terms of gaming. This is what wipes the floor with Intel. This is what wipes the floor with anything that has come before and we have some absolutely incredible gaming performance there. Now, that's even the case at 1440p, which is kind of interesting, but then we are using an RTX 4090. So in my previous benchmarks, in previous years, I have used, tended to use sort of mid to high-end graphics cards, such as 30, 70s, 30, 80s, just to see where performance would be for graphics cards that most of us would, want, would aspire to own if we were very, very keen gamers. This ain't a graphics card that most of us would aspire to own. I've dialed it up here because these CPUs are primarily focused at gaming. So what you probably will want to take a look at are some other benchmarks out there for where you're using something like a 3080 or an RTX 4070 or something like that. Something more kind of mid-range, <laughs> mid-range, <laughs> not mid-range in price, but um, something that's more mid-range to see if there will be benefits in games. But there absolutely will be because we are looking at an extremely fast CPU here that just really punches um, above its price bracket, really, when you consider how much more performance you're getting compared to the Ryzen 9, sorry, not Ryzen 9, Core i9 13900K. And that's the killer deal here, is that you are getting the absolute best performance overall in games for around 400 bucks. So that's the key takeaway here. This is by far and away the fastest CPU out there on average but you are going to be hit in terms of content creation. But I would argue not quite as bad as other as previous iterations of this CPU, specifically the 5800X3D, which did see a huge drop off in terms of content creation performance. In fact, if I was gonna go for um, either this one or the previous one, I would definitely go for this one just because there's not um, there's not that drop off in content creation performance, everything else being equal, of course, which they're not because they're on two different sockets. So kind of a pointless comparison, but I'm sure you get what I mean there. So 
For me, if I was going to swap between content creation and gaming, I would probably go for the 78, uh, 7950X3D. That would probably be the CPU that I would go for, for the simple reason that I do a lot of content creation stuff in Premiere Pro and um, image editing and all that kind of stuff. And here, um, the 7950X3D, it's not as fast as the 7950X, but it is a lot faster than this one. So if you need that extra multi-threaded performance and you're not too fussed about taking a little bit of a performance hit in some games, then that the 7950X3D is the one to go for. If it's all about gaming performance, it's all about the 7800X3D. And AMD has done a stunning job here by implementing 3D vCache with a CPU that is offering simply stunning performance in games, even compared to the best that Intel has to offer. It's not gonna be the same in every single game, so what you wanna do is go out there, check out some other benchmarks, because I can't benchmark everything. So check out the other benchmarks out there from my colleagues out there doing the same thing that I've been doing today, and just see which games you play and if this CPU is beneficial in those titles. And also check out, see what other graphics cards they're using. If they're using something more mid-range than an RTX 4090, I'd assume that most people are probably using a 4090 because they want to show this thing in its best light, which is fair enough. It's a graphics card you can buy, and if you're a very, very high-end gamer, you want to get out there and just get those benchmarks uh, or get those frame rates, then this is probably something that you would want to own. I've also benchmarked at 1440p as well, so there is more of a, uh, a GPU limitation factor there going on rather than a CPU limitation, but even there, we're still seeing huge benefits from this CPU. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching today. Thanks to AMD and everybody else, especially Palette for loaning me the RTX 4090, and we will be back soon. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, don't forget to comment below letting me know what you think of today's video and if you're going to be jumping ship from whatever platform you're on at the moment finally to socket am5 to get the 7800x3d and we will touch base with you again soon with some very exciting stuff so stay safe out there and i'll catch you soon